those who wait on the Lord. Have you ever been in a position where you're waiting? There's different seasons in life where whether by choice or not choice, you have to wait. And waiting is one of the most difficult things to do when you're not used to waiting, when you're used to getting what you want, especially in this present generation where everything is fast, fast, fast. I was talking to my wife yesterday and I said, you realize, look at Amazon. It just came out of nowhere. We all used to go to the store and shop for those very items, right? Some cool guy decided to create something that says, you don't need to go anywhere. Just press click. And what? It's literally offered to you. And if you are a Prime member, you get it the next day. They used to even do it same day if you do it early in the morning. I don't know if they still do that. Did they still do that? Then I need to negotiate my Prime membership because they don't do that for me. So, waiting is probably not a big virtue in this present generation, is it? It's one of the toughest things to do, especially if you have not gone through certain things in life where you have to wait for it. When you are hungry, like how I am sometimes, and the food has to be ovened, and you have to wait for quite a while, some, some, sometimes you even eat it before it's properly cooked, no? Especially the chicken. You, instead of well done, you do it medium rare. I'm talking about when you sneak peek just to take a little, oh, nobody's been there? No. Yes, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you are taking the sacrifice of being sick, but for the sake of having a taste of that item, you see, you would just take it quickly. You see a little bit of pink, but you say, God, help me in Jesus' name. I'm not promoting you to do that, I beg. Before you come and tell me, Pastor, I can't come to church today because I decided to do exactly what you said on the pulpit. So waiting is not um, an easy skill or a grace to have. It is definitely a difficult one especially if you have gotten everything you want at the click of your hands. You don't have to wait in line because you can even the same stores, forget Amazon, the same stores you buy from, you can also go online and buy. You see Tim Hortons and you go, uh-uh. I'm not waiting that line. You know that drive, on the, the drive through you see that line and you go, I'm not going anywhere near that. So what do you do? You order online. I didn't know that until a couple of years ago. I was at a Starbucks and then I realized people can order in advance. To, and here I am wasting my time with gas. And I said, wow, this world has changed. So waiting is which coincides with patience, is a very high-valued virtue. It's a very high-valued virtue. It's not easy to do it consistently depending on what it is. Especially even in the case of, let's say, you are looking to get married and you have a couple of hindrances and you can't really go around it, you have to play the praying and waiting game. Oh, anybody? Anybody? But, especially the guy, your body is hot. And you, you can't bypass certain things. But your body is fire. I see some men nodding their head. Uh -huh. And you're wondering, how am I going to get to this end goal? 
Yet, I can't bypass these principles. I must go through the right order of things in order for the blessing to flow. It's, it's tough. Oh. Somebody say it's tough. Oh. I'm Africanizing you. Say it's tough. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. When, when Pastor Easton preached, you would say, Yama. Then he will tell you to repeat that. All right? But because I'm Africanizing you, say, Yes, so. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But let's look at what Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 to 31 says. He gives power to the weak. We're talking about the person who's waiting, you see? He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases what? Strength. Even the youth shall faint and be what? Weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. Somebody say, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Renew your strength. Not only that, but they shall what? Mount up with wings like eagles. You know, the, the bird of the eagle is one of the most amazing creatures of the air. Their eyesight. You know that they go into the sun at a certain point of their life and they shed. And then they get renewed. And they lengthen their life through that. Well, are we here? So they shall mount up with wings like eagles. So that's what it's talking about. The renewing process of the eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not... You know, sometimes you look at a Dr. Donko and you ask yourself a question. How is this guy at this age not tired? Yet young people will tell you, I'm staying home and watching church from home. And for no reason, but just because they, are, they went to some party the night before. Yet this man will be waking up 4 a.m., 5 a.m., all day, rowing and going, 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 going. And he sleeps late. You know, one time I called him at 11.30 p.m. He picked up. I said, ah, you're so weak. I was just wondering, but. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I was just working on something. I said, wow. And then he would come early in the morning. Especially in those days, and some, from time to time he does it, he would come and pray over the chairs. And if you come to morning prayers, you'll see him. Be doing those things. Why? How does a man of that nature or any man of that status or any person that looks like they can keep going for the Lord, they can keep their grace is different on their life? It's because they have learned how to wait on the Lord. Waiting, patience, is a virtue. See, it's not the waiting that is the importance only. It's what you do while you're waiting. How you behave while you're waiting. What kind of activities you're in while you're waiting. What lessons are you learning while you're waiting. It's the in-between of the waiting that really matters. So let's look at a story of this lady named Hannah and how she waited on the Lord and what God did with Hannah 
in waiting. Now there was a certain man of Ramathayam, Zophi, of the mountains of Ephraim. And his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu. You know, I only thought Elihu was only in Job. Then I came to find out he's here too. The son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, and Ephraimite, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. And the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh, and also to the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. The priests of the Lord were there. Continue. And whenever the time came from El for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. Continue. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Can you imagine in church? Anyways, I'll get there. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Down Elkanah, her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Or what does it say? Life. And no razor shall come upon his head. And it, it, and it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved. That means it was deep. But her voice was not heard. So probably one of those whispering prayers. Father, I'm here, Father. Because you, know, you, don't, you know sometimes you pray, you don't want anybody to hear your, your prayer. But her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long? Will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the, the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the man went her way, so a so woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. 
Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of the time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called him Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. Now the man Elkanah and his and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, Not until the child is weaned, that I'll make I'll take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. So Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she she had weaned him. Now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bowls, one ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him, to the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. Amen. What a beautiful story. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew the strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not. What Hannah was going through, we read it now, but it's tough. You are, whether the first or second wife, I don't remember, but you are one of two wives. The good thing is she had a good husband. A man who really, really, really feared the Lord. She definitely accepted the right man. But let's break it down from verse 1 going. Sorry, verse 2, go ahead. So we're talking about Elkanah, the husband of who? Hannah and Penina. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah and the other, Penina. So Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. So you are married to a man who has another wife. And the other one is bearing fruit every day. Every time you blink, she's pregnant. Have you ever met those people? Every national convention you go to, they're always pregnant. <laughs> but for those who've been in all nations, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Every woman at virtue conference, she's pregnant. <laughs> oh yeah. 24 hours, she's pregnant. They just... I don't know what it is, but they know how to get pregnant. So you can imagine that's what Penina was. Somebody who just, they just said not to each other and boom, baby was coming. Just a simple kiss and babies were flying. You see, some of you older people who, who, who are married or going to get married, you should renegotiate, eh? I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you should renegotiate with your husband. 
I know you're in your 40s and 50s, but renegotiate. Maybe you want to add one more child. They don't like the idea, eh? <laughs> because it, it, the Bible says children are a what? Blessing. So maybe if you want to add more blessings, add renegotiate with your husband. Hallelujah. <laughs> Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. There's a reason why that statement is there. Because it means that it was visible. Whatever the situation is for people, sometimes it's visible. People may not say it, and some people even dare to make comments. I, we have a good friend of ours. She goes to a different church altogether. And she said that she had a challenge in giving birth. She was married for how long? Six years. And she had no children. And people in church would make side comments to her, saying to her, look, how come you don't have any children? Sorry? And she even worked in the children's ministry. And they will look at her, they will comment, she leads praise and worship. And they will comment and say, ah, this one who worships God, why is God not blessing you? There must be something wrong. You know people make those kind of foolish conclusions? Instead of praying for the person, they are gossiping them. And sometimes even insulting them into their face. So there's a reason why they mention it in this passage that Hannah had no children because there was a visible pain. A visible challenge. Sometimes your challenge and your pain is not hidden. It's visible. There are some who are hidden, but there are some that you can't hide. This friend of ours was working in the children's ministry. She, she, she even, when we invited her to our wedding, uh, the July one, I, I remember visibly, in fact, I was so pleased. She said to me, she said to my wife, I can't come. This is like my wife's best friend. She said, I can't come. I said, why? She said, because I have to lead praise and worship for all night prayers. I said, you have my blessing. You can go. <laughs> Somebody who serves God the way she serves, that she can even deny the wedding access and serve, yet she's been insulted left and right, similar to Hannah. Continue. This man went up from his city yearly at Cana, the husband, to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And also the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. See, uh, uh, the guy is a God-fearing man, you see? He's a God-fearing man because that's what a God-fearing man does. You have children, Sunday school. Hey, son, here you go. Daughter, here you go. Son, here you go. Daughter, here you go. And then you give your wife or tell you, remind your wife to give her offering. And then you too, you have your tithes and offering. And you're teaching them the ways of the Lord. So it's not like he was hating on Penina. He was also doing his due diligence in making sure he would serve his family and lead them to the ways of the Lord. So he would do those things. Oh, you didn't catch it. So I have to move on from that one. <laughs> but to Hannah, he would give what? A double portion. A double portion. For he loved Hannah. Although the Lord had closed her womb. What's interesting about this passage is God has allowed her womb to be closed. I've never done the research to find out how old Hannah was at the time. And I'm interested to know. But whatever it is, we knew the current conclusion of the matter was her womb was closed. 
So this woman is waiting. She, she, she has intimate moments with the same man, but different results. I don't even know if they lived in the same house, but that would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? You wake up every year. Oh, honey, I'm pregnant. And then bitterness of your soul. You're saying, oh, God, why me? This one, every time, she's wicked to me, but yet she's the one. Have you ever seen wicked people be blessed? It's like the blessings of God is flowing through their life. But the Bible has a scripture for that. It says their end is not well if they don't repent. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her own. See, when you are in waiting, let's talk about it. Surround yourself with the right people. It's not now that you choose to surround with people who will help you doubt. You know some people help you doubt? They assist you. They facilitate the doubting process. You are hoping for God and they're telling you about your age. They're telling you the science that tells you it's impossible. They're telling you, ah, no man is in the church. Come on. You see the ratio? Oh, there's nobody my age. They're helping your doubting process. While in waiting, you're supposed to be increasing your faith. Because faith is the currency of heaven that causes miracles to take place. In waiting, if you are doing the right things, your faith will increase. And you will be renewed regularly. And what would happen? Your faith will cause the hand of God to take over. Are you following? Okay. Continue. And her rival also provoked her. The key word is what? Severely. And to make her miserable. So there was well intent, purposeful intent, planned intent to make Hannah miserable. You see, my husband loves you. My husband loves me more than you. You can't bear fruit, my friend. Why are you even in this house? Are you, are you even blessed of God, knowing your situation? Why do you even go to church? All this church, 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 everyday church, and yet church hasn't helped you in this matter. Just to make her miserable. Because it was visible that her womb was closed. So it was year by year. When she went up to the house of God. Do you, do you see some people when they're going through a tough time. You know the first thing that they quit? Church. Church. I, don't, I, don't, I, I personally don't understand it, but the first thing they quit the church, but the Bible shows us over and again, story from story, people's life from people's lives, that the house of God is the place to go in your most challenging days. That's where part of the process where you also get what? Renewed. Oh, are we here? So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord, that she provoked her. I told you, she was telling her every day you go to church and you don't see any good thing come from your life. Clearly, Elkanah loves me more than you because it doesn't look like he sleeps with you. Oh, can I get real or am I too... Uh, are we here? Oh, boy. Oh, we're going somewhere with this. Somebody say we're going somewhere with this. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. You know, when you are hoping for that thing and you are praying for that thing 
and you're going to God every day for that thing. And it's not happening, but it's happening for everybody else but you. It's, and, and you even, you can, you, if you're not careful and you don't position yourself properly, you can even get bitter and jealous about other people. You can get bitter altogether that you don't want to come to church because you've seen everybody else blessed. But Hannah refused to allow the bitterness possibly in her soul to stop her. In fact, she used church as an anchor. When you are waiting on the Lord, don't let church be the one thing to go. Are we here? Church should be the place you are running to, not running from. All that hard work, hard work you're working, if God shuts down your body today, you can't do that work anymore. All that hard work you're working that takes hours, do you know that if you open your mouth before God in the throne room of grace to obtain mercy and to receive grace in time of need, God will provide faster than the 12-hour shift you do. I'm not saying don't work. I'm saying sometimes you depend on the work, forgetting that you have a God who also provides. It's not just your job that provides you a paycheck, my dear. It is God, too, that provides you things. Then Akana, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart grieved? A man not better to you than ten sons. So in other words, the guy didn't understand. He doesn't get it, right? <laughs> He's like a typical man. Ah, I give you double offering. I love you more than the other one. Why are you? And he's also trying to also encourage her. It's another teaching for another day, but when you have a spouse, one of their due responsibilities is to be an encourager unto you. Not to always cause headaches. Every day they complain. Instead of encouraging and lifting you up, blessing your soul, Helping you to be confident and have faith. But unfortunately, sometimes people marry the wrong person. So this is what they get. I'm not talking about Elkanah, but generally, this is what they get. Your job as a spouse is to be an encourager as well. On both ends. It helps when the person is waiting on the Lord, praying about this one thing, or you're both praying together. And asking the Lord together, joining and fasting together, seeking God together about this one thing. The Bible says, where two agree on earth, it shall be what? Established. So in other words, when you are waiting and you are waiting alone, it's kind of tough. <laughs> Instead of having a brother or a sister, or if you have married your spouse, praying with you. It can make a big difference. Oh, those who are not married yet, please, make the right decision, I beg. Don't go and find, no pun intended, some Joe Blow guy. And you call that a husband because he has money. Yet, he won't help you with the spiritual things. He'll be the first to laugh at you when you don't get what you want in life. And say, so you see, the church is not providing these things for you. Have you ever seen those situations? I don't want to ask if you've been in those situations, so I will, I will refrain from my words there. Oh, you guys are quiet on me. Are you okay? Are we here? Okay. So remember, Elkanah came to him Sorry. They asked her if she's not eaten. And 
See, these are principles. I don't have time to break it down because that's not my topic, but I'll, I'll, I'll make it clear. She went to the shepherd of the house. See, there's some people who, they don't listen to the shepherd's voice. Eh? The voice of the shepherd is as valuable as anything. Dr. Donko said, and he was talking to the pastors more so, but I'll, I'll say it, but it goes to members as well. If you never, under your pastor, come to him with an issue, then you're not being shepherded. Ever. Because everybody has issues. But if you've never come to your pastor with an issue, then you're not being shepherded. Oh, that one, everybody went. Oh, yeah. Sometimes people call me and say, I have an issue at work. Does this lady bugging me at work? I said, okay. This is what you should do. Pray and command whatever evil spirits is around her to get out. Go in early, plead the blood, da, 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 da. They come back and say, I tried it. It didn't work, or it worked, right? And then... If it worked, praise God. It happened. It didn't work. Let's see what God says about what to do next. Because look, look, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Go back. Go back. Then I kind of husband said to her, why? You see? You weep. And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better than continue? So Hannah arose early that finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. This, in a joke, that's what you call a tithe collector because he was standing right there, right there, right here, as people were leaving. Amen. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. You couldn't, you couldn't leave. Oh, camera people, you're supposed to be following. You couldn't leave. You couldn't leave. The, no, no, I'm standing here on purpose. You couldn't leave the, the, the thing. You can't leave the church without giving an offering because you know that he's blessing everybody. Hallelujah. And telling them amen. Thank you. Thank you. So he was by the doorpost being a tax tithe collector. <laughs> amen? That amen wasn't loud. We'll continue. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept. See, when you are going through whether anxiety, whether stress, whether which is caused by the issue that you're hoping God to do, you don't run away from God. You go to him. God is an awesome distressor. He removes the pressure away from you. Have you ever been in that situation where you feel intense for whatever reason, whatever situation it is, and then you pray genuinely. Then you feel relaxed all of a sudden. Anybody? Yeah? You feel relaxed all of a sudden. You just, ah. This is this is God taking control now. That's where she was. The pressure was so much. She was being provoked so much. She was severely being made fun of and being ridiculed so much. She said to herself, at this time, when I go to the house of God, I will even increase my prayer. Because she went year by year. Remember that. Year by year. The one thing she never gave up was church and seeking God in his house. Year by year she went. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servants, but will give your maid servant a male child. See, sometimes you got to be specific. Eh? In your waiting and you were seeking, I've said this before and I'll say it again. And I've seen flyers around it recently. When you are waiting, you're not just sitting there doing nothing. I remember there is a lady 
from one of our branches. I couldn't say the branch because you may know who it is. There was a lady in one of our branches. And she said she's waiting on God. That's what she said. She said she's waiting on God. So you know what she did? She decided to shut herself in a room and not come to church. She said until she hears from God, she's not leaving and going to no church. And I said, really? We called her, spoke to her, said, hey, that's not the way of God. If you're waiting, what does a waitress or a waiter do? They continue to what? Serve. Serve. You don't wait and say, I'm shutting down life. She even got fired from her job because she shut herself in a room. No, when you are waiting, you are also what? Serving. Waiting has nothing to do with slowing down. It has everything to do with, with your faith and what you are hoping and expecting God to do. In fact, in the process of waiting, you may even increase your worship to God. You may even fast more. True? You may increase your prayer time more. True? And to some, they may even increase their offering more. True? The waiting game is not a time of pausing. The waiting game before God is a time of increase of worship. Whatever can cause your heart to have the faith, to believe God as he is, a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's why she made a vow. And you know, a vow is not made without an offering. Before God, a vow is not made. It's not just mere words, because if you read later on, she brought all these bulls and stuff when she was coming to dedicate the child. That's why we do dedications and you must give a thanksgiving offering unto the Lord when you have a baby. If you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, oh, oh, oh you're fast, you're fast. <laughs> then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. There was certain tribes that weren't able to, if you're in the priestly hood and all these things, you couldn't cut your hair and all that. It's a longer detail, but if you want to study, you can. Continue. And it happened. As she continued praying before the Lord. I want to highlight that before I get to Eli. When you are in a place of waiting for the Lord, about a particular thing you're petitioning for. Prayer must be your bedrock. Because from prayer brings forth the revelation of the word. And from the word brings forth the promises. And we know the Bible says that his words are yes and amen. That he shall not return back to him what? Void. So it happened that she continued. So no, regardless of the provocation, regardless of the, dis, the distress, regardless of the challenges and the annoyance of the lady, the other wife, the Bible says she continued praying before the Lord. Particularly also in his house. In our present era, in the All Nations format, when we have Saturday, Friday prayer meeting, it's not time to say I'm depressed. No, come with your depression and let God lift it off. Hello? I, re I remember, uh, this is when I first started the faith. I, was, I, um, I used to take the bus to church a lot in Brampton to Toronto. And I remember very clearly, one day, I was in the presence of God, praying so deeply. And my sister texted me and said, I don't, I don't see you. You didn't call us this morning to pick you up. Is everything okay? And I texted her back and I said, oh, uh, you, don't worry about me. Me, I'm in the presence. I'm praying. <laughs> she sent me a message and says, what kind of nonsense is this? It's church time. That's also part of worship. 
take the bus and come to church. I said, but I'm praying. He said, ah, there's a time and place for everything. This is the worship time with people of the same mind. Everybody has that moment. In fact, a couple of years ago, the same situation played out with another person in the church. And I had to tell them nicely the same thing. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart because she doesn't want anybody to hear. She doesn't want anybody to listen. She wants her and her God to commune. Only her lips were moving. So she wasn't a mute either. You know, some people say they pray in their hearts and their minds. No, no. See, even this tells you that she was moving her mouth, but it was more of a whisper. Because who knows who was at the prayer meeting, right? Because I'm sure it wasn't just them that was there. They went yearly, meaning that many people also came. So she's just probably whispering, God, help me. I've been looking at this woman and she's been causing problems for me. My husband loves me, yes, I know, but... This is what I desire. And you know what's interesting? When she was praying, the man of God was observing. You know, pastors, we watch. Oh, oh you, know, don't, you don't know? We watch. We watch. We observe. It's part of our natural gift to just observe. We see how things are moving, what people are doing. We just observe. I've, I've seen people come and pray, and all they do is close their eyes. They don't open them up. Within the hour, they've only prayed for five minutes. <laughs> we pray for a whole hour. They've only prayed for five minutes. <laughs> so we watch. We observe. We look. So he's also doing the pastoral thing. He's watching. He's observing. He said, <laughs> this woman, I've never seen her like this. She comes year by year, but today is different. She's moving her lips like talking to herself kind of situation. And her voice was, was, was not... That's how, you know, some people can get to a place of distress where it looks like they're talking to themselves. And some people do, actually. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk. Can you, how bold can you be to ask somebody that? Put your wine away from you. You see the job of the pastor? To tell you what you're doing wrong and correct you. You see that? So don't, don't complain if I tell you stop doing what you're doing and come to church. <laughs> but Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. I am a woman, I'm, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk I have drunk nor so I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. She's saying the reason why I look like I'm crazy because because when you get to the place where you are expecting God to do something and you are praying shaka tayaraba and you are, you you look stupid to some people. People can't understand your crazy faith at that point. You're in a place with God that no one, including the pastor, may not even understand. You've gone to the place where you say, God, it must happen. I refuse to leave this place until you answer me. It must take place. This thing must happen. I remember Uncle Fifi used to say, you have, you have to have such faith and pray so crazy you look stupid before people. Everybody's looking at you like you're crazy, but you know your God. You know how big he is compared to your problem. You understand that this God is able to fulfill what I have asked of him. So you're petitioning, your faith is increasing. So you look mad, even to some people. You look like somebody who has no sense. 
Have you ever seen somebody, I mean, those who have gone to prayer meetings, you know what I'm talking about. There's different types of prayer people. Have you ever seen that person who, 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 who would go, they're in the corner, in the prayer meeting, they're in the corner, and they're just, they look so tired, but, and you can't hear them, but you know they're praying. And they can, and they're praying for hours. No interruption. Nobody's coming to them. They're just praying. And to be honest, if you look at them, you think they're a little crazy. But they are, the distress, the issue, the problem that they're, they're dealing with, only she or he can understand. So they're in the corner, Riba Asakata. Every prayer meeting they're there and they find themselves a quiet corner. Asanda Kedeyanda. God, your word will never fail me. God, your word will never fail me. God, your word will never fail me. Your word is sure, yes, and amen. God, your word will never fail me. You will give me this child. You will give me this godly husband. You will provide this for me. You will provide a home for me. You will provide for my children. You will. Ah, and the person is praying, they look insane. You can't hear them, but you can see their lips moving. That was Hannah. For those who've been to prayer meetings, you know what I'm talking about. And they're praying, and they're praying, and they're praying, and they're praying, and they're praying. Until one day they get up, when we're saying share testimonies, suddenly the person that doesn't speak to you comes and shares the testimony. Because they've been petitioning before God regularly, as Hannah was doing. Every time there was an unction for prayer meeting, she was there. It says, do not consider your, your, your maid servant as a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. Now, this is a very important piece. She used the word complaint. Very important. In your waiting, you are tempted, especially if you're being provoked, to gossip or complain. Or even insult the other person that is causing havoc for you. But do you know that she wasn't telling it to Eli. She was telling it to God. In your waiting, allow, do not allow your conversations to be wasted. Eh? Before you go and cancel your own prayer. If you're frustrated, it's okay. You can let God know. But let it be God. If you do tell somebody, your pastor, your cell leader, okay. But let it be for a reason of prayer. Where you need God to move. Am I giving you some steps here? Hmm? She said, but I have spoken until now. Remember I told you, the lady that's in the corner that hasn't been speaking to anybody, but been praying and you can see the lips moving. The same thing, she said, but my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. In other words, she wasn't speaking to anybody. She came to church and she was not talking to anybody. And I'm not talking about her being mean faced and not serving, no. When it came to prayer time, she knew the assignments of what God, what, what her and God are working on. Oh, are we here? Continue. You're almost done. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. You know that when you come for prayer, we said, do you need anything? Come. And you know sometimes we don't even ask what your request is. But we come in agreement to pray to, into your request. That's exactly what happened there. Hello? And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate. And her face was no longer sad. So she just finished her fast. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. What I like about Hannah is that she never allowed her worship to be interfered with. 
you'll be so tempted. It's only when you start waiting and fasting and praying before the Lord, all sorts of temptations desire to come your way. All sorts of challenges decide to appear out of nowhere. But she never allowed her worship to waver. Her worship was consistent. Because remember, it says she woke up in the morning, right? Early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Where do you think she did that? In God's house. So she came to service, and then after service, the Bible says she went home and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Remember that friend I told you about of my wife? Her faith was crazy. She looked insane. So what she would do is she would go and buy baby clothes and declare that my child shall wear this one day. She would speak to her womb, say, you shall be fruitful regularly. This womb shall not be barren. In her waiting, she wasn't relaxing. She was strengthening her faith. Just like Hannah. In her waiting, she wasn't complaining. She would call my wife and they would pray. At 12 midnight, losing sleep. Today, she's with two children and a third one is on the way. The same one people said, have you no children? It's so fruitful. Do you know that child? She, I don't know how quick she went back to church, but it was pretty quick. <laughs> because for her, God provided this one over. <laughs> they said, um, Pastor Perez, she gave birth, what was it? It was during the national convention. She gave birth the, the day, that day. Nobody even knew she gave birth. She literally disappeared and nobody knew why. The next day she was at church with the kid. And they said, ah, where did you go? Oh, I gave birth. You know that kid today plays all music, instruments in the church? And runs the youth ministry. I'm using children as an example, but this goes for all things. What are you waiting on God for? Use your words carefully while you wait. Be careful of whom you are speaking with. Be careful of whom is speaking to you. Be cautious of your worship not being paused but you continue to serve. The waiting game before God it's not a matter of pausing your life. It's a matter of increasing your faith. And when you wait on the Lord, if you go back to that verse, Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I am of belief that Hannah really believed and it is factual because the Bible says beauty and strength are in his sanctuary. And she understood that verse very well. Now Psalm 96, 6, right? He, she understood that very well, that where I get my refreshing. Because remember, she may be in the same home with that lady. And all she's hearing is bickering and bickering and bickering and problem and problem and problem. And it's not increasing her faith. So where will she receive her strength? In the sanctuary. That's where she will receive her strength. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. No wonder Hannah consistently went 
to the house of the Lord to worship. And then, when she made that vow before the Lord, it was only when she said, my son will be dedicated unto the Lord forever. Then did God give her the riches. Whatever you're waiting for, it should not take you away from God. It should draw you closer to God. That's why God will be pleased to bless you with it. In Jesus' name, amen.